The army is preparing for urban warfare in megacities, mass migration, disaster, and inner city turmoil. There are two things on this that, of course, we're seeing cause an issue right now. Migration, immigration, illegal immigration is causing an issue, which, of course, is sparking these protests. The protests, let me rephrase that, the protest organizers are calling for more militant-style protests. Militant style protest, the same thing that we saw at Berkeley. Their organizers, who are borderline calling for terrorism, are saying that they need to organize and grow their movement. And of course, be just as forceful and just as destructive. We've seen for the past several years a massive buildup within the armies for guess what? Civil disturbance, civil unrest, martial law. These sorts of things have been building for a long time. The other thing that we've been witnessing build up too is these megacities. Which of course, I mean that just makes a hotbed for a police state. A big part of the concern that we have at the Christian Truther for Donald Trump is the infrastructure. What is the plan what is the architecture what is the, i mean we need to know these things before we make an actual assessment on if it's a globalist agenda or not as far as the infrastructure goes there are other things he's doing that of course we're watching as well but this is by far one of the biggest ones mega cities we have elon musk who just started building his tunnels and i guarantee we could find a connection to fema somewhere some down the line Somewhere down the line, we can easily find a connection. But now we have megacities, and the army is preparing for urban warfare in these megacities. There will be war in the streets of America. Things have been engineered that way. The scenarios are many. The issues are complex. The current anger from the left, who are violently protesting against President Trump, is just one aspect of it. Now, of course, we're also witnessing psychological warfare coming from the White House. They're engaging in what's called resistance fatigue. They're throwing out some crazy things, which are not exactly crazy, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, a far more radical ideology is coming from the White House than what we would probably see if people were trying to keep things smooth. There's a reason for this. They're doing what's called resistance fatigue. I exposed this just last week, I think it was. I'm not sure. It could have been two weeks ago. Resistance fatigue is they're trying to wear the news out. They're trying to wear the protesters out because they can't protest forever. They're trying to wear the pockets of billionaires out. It's smart. It's really smart. But of course, the question always is, resistance fatigue and psychological warfare, the army industrial complex, it's got to be for something. What are they testing why are they pushing this? What's the end game? Let's continue. But the Pentagon and the U.S. national security structure is increasingly looking towards the shifting demographics around the globe. People have moved away from rural areas and shifted into cities. Wherever conflict stirs. Now let me tell you something about this real quick. This shift um, from rural areas into cities. This was engineered, at least in Indiana. They did what's called reverse urbanization where the people were moving away from the cities who were wealthy, they needed to change this. So what they did was they started trying to bring the wealth back into the city, and of course the rural or the um, lower class, middle class was moving outwards as the wealth generated in the middle of the city. That's what they did in Indiana, in Indianapolis specifically. We've seen this in other places, in other uh, states and so on and so forth. We've seen it in other countries as well. But the reverse urbanization is a lot of what they want. The UN has an agenda for this. It's called sustainable development. It is a massive agenda for the new world order. Please, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've never heard it before, go to our website, christiantruther.com. Go to topics. Click the new world order post. We've got whole sections on this covering it. Wherever conflict stirs, there will be a need for military and SWAT response to the call. Entire cities will be locked down. Door-to-door -door sweeps will often have violent ends. Baghdad could be brought home to the streets of America, and the military already knows it. The powers that be are deeply concerned about the unfolding situations with migrants. 
illegal immigrants, potential terrorists, political factions, violent protests, arson, and riots. Increasingly, they are training for and expecting a homegrown conflict that will call for them to restore order in, a ma in major cities and even hunt down suspects block to block like the Boston Marathon bombing incident while making some significant infringement of our civil liberties. During the past several years, there have been reports about unannounced urban warfare drills in major U.S. cities, sometimes in coordination with major events. There have, been also, there have also been military training scenarios that have maintained a consistent theme of civil unrest, economic breakdown, and widespread riots. As IntelliHub reports, for years, the alternative media has warned about the U.S. military possibly being used against the American people in a time of economic collapse or any sort of martial law scenario. Drills such as Vigilant Guard 2010 have brought widespread attention to the fact that portions of our own military are training to take on crowds of American citizens demanding food and constitutional rights in a time of crisis. Now a new release by the website Public Intelligence once again confirms that as recently as February and March of 2012, U.S. troops at Joint Base Lewis-McChord in Washington were conducting training scenarios for a civil disturbance domestic quick reaction force. A series of photos of the drills shows U.S. troops with crowd control riot shields on the opposite side of actors portraying what can only be described as American citizens. What do the elite know that we don't? See, folks, I mean, a lot of people like to say there's all this imminent doom and they all want to call, play on our fears and things like that. And, of course, we have mainstream media pulling us left, right, and center. And, of course, there's something else. There's a long game at play here. They are playing the long game. And if we aren't paying attention to the long game, then they will be basically committing psychological warfare and winning. Now, of course, the Bible is clear on what happens in these days. There will be distress amongst nations. Of course, wars and rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, and so on and so forth. There will be earthquakes. There will be crazy weather and much, much more. But what we're seeing right now is the buildup of megacities. This is the concern with Donald Trump. If he begins to construct the infrastructure for megacities all around America, the infrastructure is, a, is a, a massive part of it. America currently is not built the way that they would need it to lock it down. It's just not. I mean, yeah, we see Walmarts and we see some other big buildings which could be used for FEMA and things like that. But we're talking about cities and highways and interstates and so on and so forth. Trains and the whole nine. Now a major military scholar is calling for the creation of mega cities combat units. A proposal that is a major and drastic departure from warfare of the past, which has been designed away from cities. Now, military and paramilitary units, as well as local law enforcement, much, much engage the population itself. With all the unpredictability afforded by a real life, complex situation filled with combatants, non-combatants, and friendlies behind any and all doors, etc. With a heightened focus on terrorism and reigning in undocumented immigrants, there will be a tendency, if we are not careful, for a heightened, militarized, and police state atmosphere to arise, both at home and in every place that they take the fight. Major John Spencer, a former ranger instructor and, instructor and scholar at West Point's Modern War Institute, called for an armed unit ready for megacities deployment in an op-ed. Every year, more and more of the world's population moves into cities. The number of megacities is growing exponentially. Both of these global patterns and their inevitable consequences for military operations are well documented. Yet we still do not have units that are even remotely prepared to operate in megacities. If we want to find success on the urban battlefields, the U.S. Army will inevitably find itself fighting on in the future fighting on in the future that needs to change. Throughout history, military forces either sought to avoid or simply had no need to engage in urban combat. Most military doctrine and the strategic theory it is built upon, encourages land forces but to bypass, lay siege to, or, if required, isolate and slowly clear cities from the outside in. The great armies of the world have historically fought for cities rather than in cities, a distinction with a significant difference. 
In cases where military forces had no choice but to operate within cities, the environment, almost without exception, proved very costly in both military and civilian casualties. Today, many armies have accepted that global population growth and urbanization trends will increasingly force military operations into crowded cities, and military forces must therefore be capable of conducting the full range of operations in large, dense urban areas. Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley recently remarked that the Army has been designed, manned, trained, and equipped for the last 241 years to operate primarily in rural areas. But that is about to change, Milley continued. The conclusions of the SSG research are clear. Megacities are unavoidable. They are potentially the most challenging environment the Army has ever faced, and the Army is unprepared to operate in them. The ongoing military study of the megacities is the NATO Urbanization Project. In the project's most recent experiment, the NATO team conducted a war game to determine the capabilities needed to achieve the goals of three likely missions in 2035, response to mass migration, natural disaster, and inner city turmoil. Within these missions, the war game specified that a brigade conducted, uh, conduct three operations in a megacity, joint forcible entry, major combat, and subsequent stability operations without unacceptable levels of military or civilian casualties. Of course, urban warfare is not exclusively a future phenomenon. Much has been learned from urban battles in recent history. The siege of, of Sarajevo, 1992 to 1995, the Battle of Mogadishu, 1993, Russian operations in Grozny, 1994 to 95, and 1999 to 2000, U.S. operations in Baghdad, 2003, and Fallujah, 2004, Lebanese operations in Nahr al bared Lebanon, 2007, and the Second Battle of Donetsk, 2014 to 2015. Now, of course, Ukraine is still an ongoing crisis. We're still seeing that today. But the broad lessons of these cases have yet to truly inform Army training for urban combat, which for most units consists mainly of tactical training. Room clearing drills with four-man teams, the Army would be much better served by the creation of an entire unit dedicated to preparing to operate in dense urban environments, particularly megacities. We know, we know for a fact the New World Order wants to construct megacities. It is easier for them to lock the entire thing down and everybody in it. Lock them all down. Any way you slice it, the military and the national security infrastructure are watching for cracks in the system. How about this? They're watching for cracks in the system, but what if they design the cracks? That might explain to you right there the concern that we have for the infrastructure that's going to be con that's going to be done under Donald Trump. That's I mean, if they design the cracks, they know the weak points, they know the exit the exit routes, and so on and so forth. And a lot of people could learn them, but guess what? If the army designed them, uh, yet they know them, do you see the problem? We're set for a massive infrastructure, quote unquote, upgrade. Does the U.S. need one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if it's done properly, then there's not going to be an issue about this at all. But the architecture is key. We have guys like Parag Khanna, who, of course, was an advisor to Obama, who is calling for the construction of megacities to fit a globalized agenda. A lot is going on. And the army is going to begin preparing for urban warfare in megacities. A lot is about to shift and is shifting right now. Are you paying attention? If you want the latest news, in-depth reports, independent in-depth reports, investigative reports, go to ChristianTruther.com. If you want to support what we do while getting something back, go to ChristianTruther.com slash info for more information on how you can help us help you. That's all I've got for you. God bless and carry on.